Good morning and welcome to uh, Writing Beyond Your Platform, Writing as a Part of the Spiritual Life. Uh, so this week I've been thinking a lot about where we go from our last video. So in our last video we talked about redefining success and failure and hopefully you've kind of wrestled with that and have at least some goals uh, in your soul for what you consider success to be and the failures that you can sort of relinquish because God has not called them failures, even if the world has. And so as we sort of move on from there, I feel like we're really in a season of preparation and seasons of preparation as we journey through them uh, always remind me of Jesus in the wilderness because we see uh, Jesus when he enters the wilderness before his ministry life really begins. Um, we see him get tempted and he's tempted to achieve the kind of success, the kind of greatness that is actually his destiny. And the devil offers him these chances to rule and reign as he someday would once he um, was raised from the dead. But he's offered these in a premature manner and tempted to actually take them in his hand and make them happen by his own will instead of obeying and following the Father the way that the Father was leading him. And so as we look at success, our redefinition of success, it's incredibly important that we realize that the world will offer us ways and our own will and our own drive and the messages of our culture can cause us to feel like if we could only, if we only did this, if we only stepped out in that way, if we only leapt from this mountain, then we, you know, God would catch us and we would achieve what, what we really, really, really want to achieve. But the way of Jesus is always about deeper and lower <laughs> before higher and greater. And so um, I've been thinking about this teaching of Henri Nguyen. He wrote about silence in one of his books and the way of the heart is the book. And he called it the portable cell. And this idea of silence and the portable cell is an idea of a spiritual life that's so deep and quiet in its regard for God and for people that even when you're out interacting with the world, you're carrying that peaceful silence of God within you so that God's voice within you, God's word within you, is greater than the voice of our culture. It's great enough to overwhelm your own voice when you feel like you want to advise or you want to give your opinion. You're able to draw from that place true spiritual fruit and offer it to the world. And I, I've, I'm realizing what writing beyond your platform is really about because I'm on this journey with you, is it's really about seeking a spiritual success by seeking a deeper spiritual life. And it may end up being worldly success, you know? It may end up that as you seek spiritual success, I would say Henri Nguyen is a great example of someone who sought spiritual success by deepening his spiritual life, by serving by loving the disadvantaged and the poor and the poor of spirit, um, by lowering himself and always listening for the voice of God. He also achieved really worldly success. I mean, he's, you know, he ended up publishing many, many books and he's an incredible voice in the Christian world, um, was an incredible voice and still is, even after his death. So. If we want a spiritual depth in our success, we have to have a spiritual depth in our life and in our soul. And so I think valuing silence, cultivating a, a portable cell within us means, as Jesus did, disengaging from our culture and our comfort in some way. It means finding quiet places, maybe in the morning, maybe at night, maybe in the middle of the day on our lunch break. It means listening for God's voice above our own. Um, it means valuing silence and the presence of God 
more than we value our own feelings, thoughts, opinions, and listening for him in those places. And so the scripture that keeps coming to me as I sort of dwell on my need for a portable cell and my need for a deeper spiritual life is um, Zephaniah 3.17. And I think this was true of Jesus in the wilderness. And it's true of us as we journey through uh, the wilderness of this world where we're constantly being prepared. God is preparing his bride and we're part of the bride and he's preparing us for eternity. And so Zephaniah 3.17 keeps coming to me. Um, the Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exult over you with singing. And the truth is that through silence, we can hear God better. In silent, lonely places, in quiet, sometimes wilderness experiences, God is always with us and he's singing and he's speaking. And if we will but listen, if we will listen, he can deepen our spiritual life in such a way that when we step out of that season, when we step out of that portable cell, what we offer the world is different than what the world has been producing constantly with its noise. It will be a quieter, more peaceful, wiser, um, prophetic even voice. And that's really what we want in our writing. We, we don't want to keep writing the same things. We want, don't want to just keep writing what we're writing, right? <laughs> what our ideas are. We want to write things that will make the world a better place, that will change people that will enlighten people, that will draw people closer to the love of God, that will set people free from their own fears, that will give people a mighty power to overcome their own temptations and struggles. And so we go first. We go into that place first. So the, the challenge for this week's video is how can you prioritize silence in your life what steps can you take? What boundaries can you put up? What heart positions can you change? And thereby cultivate a portable cell in your daily life so that when you interact with people, you're not just speaking from your own mind and your own thoughts and your own worries and your own drive and your own will, but you're speaking from a place of rest in God, silence in his presence, and deep, deep communion with him. That's your challenge. Go get him. I'll see you next time. Bye.